Hi, my name is Pis Lee, working at Hyundai Motor Company. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to introduce Guider, a new performance monitoring demo, and uh, explain how to use it. Yeah, this is a summary for my talk. Uh, first, uh, talking about performance analysis and optimization and tools be uh, required. Uh, next, introducing Guider and its various features. And finally, explaining how to uh, monitor performance of our systems automatically using Guider. Okay, let me talk about performance factors. Uh, first of all, uh, the major performance factor is CPU. Uh, there are many reasons to make your system slow, such like uh, CPU intensive jobs and frequent context switching and busy way tasks and so on. Uh, if your system is slowing down, the first uh, the first thing to do is watching total CPU uses and uh, which tasks are using CPU cores. Uh, memory is also important. Frequent memory allocation and deallocation jobs will consume CPU more than we expected. Uh, and infrequent allocation and missing deallocation, such like leaks, memory leaks, uh, can cause the, uh, the out of memory and then system will be slow seriously. Uh, in worst case, it will restart finally. Uh, to free up memory, uh, Linux kernel try to flush file caches, uh, swap pages out. Uh, it called reclaim. Uh, once reclaim start, the system will slowly start to uh, slow down. Next one is I/O. Uh, generally, uh, block device is the slowest in our system uh, these days. So optimizations such like caching, uh, preloading, compression, workload tuning is required. Uh, especially, unnecessary I/O operations should be removed, and contiguous operations must be merged. Uh, uh, last one is for communication between tasks. Uh, lock. It's very important to prevent data corruption shared between multiple tasks, but it can have a huge impact on performance. Uh, excessive lock contention increases CPU uses and also uh, response time. So moreover, performance can be worse uh, depending on lock attributes, such like priority inheritance protocol, and busy wait, and wake up storm, uh, in Futex and Linux. So uh, in addition to these factors I described, uh, there are many other performance factors. Uh, most importantly, we need to be able to recognize each performance factor and measure its actual impact and uh, verify them. We must think about how to measure them. So logging and using tools are the most effective way to analyze performance. Uh, logging is very useful for uh, recording specific information, but understanding log requires domain-specific knowledge, so system level engineers or new members, new engineers, uh, are difficult to uh, understand them usually. In addition, adding new logs requires source code and tool chain for rebuild. Uh, it's very boring and time consuming job. So it's also difficult to record and analyze too many logs because of the limitation for memory and uh, time. So we prefer to use performance tools like this. It's very comfortable and effective to analyze performance at system level. So as shown in this picture, there are many performance tools in various areas. But sometimes too many tools confuse us and determining the right tool from a variety of performance issues is not easy. So even uh, so they are not all uh, installed in our system usually. So we should install them in manual, but they may require latest kernel and libraries and dependent packages and more kernel configurations. So after installing them, uh, even require rebuilding their target program and restarting target tasks and loading kernel modules again. So uh, there are too many limitations. So I introduce Guider. Unified Runtime Performance Analyzer. Uh, it can monitor, profile, trace, and visualize various performance factors. Uh, and it also contains many embedded units. 
Now it consists of about 135 commands and each options. So monitoring features provide continuous performance stats every interval in real time. And profiling features provide a statistic uh, overview of collected data during a specific interval. Uh, tracing features provide specific data on the execution of the task in the form of logs. So Gaida is a kind of uh, command line interface tool. So it offers a lot of features by the combination of comments and options. But in this talk, I'll try to explain only some useful features because of a time limitation. So it's open source program and written in Python. So it doesn't require installation, but PIP and Yocto SP are also supported for your convenience. Actually, uh, just executing guider.py file is enough to use it. Uh, guider never use external binaries, uh, such like executable programs, libraries, and Python packages, uh, except for Matplot for uh, some kind of visualization. Uh, most of guider features are implemented directly using uh, standard libraries, such like libc. Uh, that's the reason why guider doesn't require uh, rebuild, install, and configuration. In addition, it can be applied with only one megabyte of storage space. Yeah, it's very light. And these characteristics are very attractive in embedded system. All features of guider are supported in Linux and Android. And it also provides some limited features on Mac OS and Windows. Uh, from now, let me introduce some uh, killing features of Guider. Uh, first one is monitoring system resources in real time. Uh, it, it looks like Linux top, yeah. But this feature works by periodically updating stats for system resources and events. So system resources is about uh, system uh, CPU, memory, swap, block, and network storage. So as shown in the picture, in the first part, uh, system resources are shown on the timeline here, uh, such like number of core, number, and uh, RAM, and swap. So additional uh, system information such as context switching, interrupt, running task, and memory zone, and performance stats using our uh, performance monitoring unit are also displayed. And second part here, and uh, important system level resources and events are displayed. Uh, system states such as CPU uses and available memory and swap uses and uh, memory reclaim events and Block I.O. and network I.O. are uh, most precious information for performance analysis. In addition, per core usages are also displayed uh, through, uh, not shown in this picture, governor, CPU governor, and clock, and temperature for each core can be shown together with if you're using uh, some specific options. In the third part here, uh, storage information about busy and workload and available space is shown for each devices. Uh, heavy storage workload can cause serious performance degradation, so that's the reason why we uh, should check these stats. In the upper part of this picture, um, here is similar to uh, uh, block devices. Network information about inbound and outbound is shown for each device. In the raw part of the picture, not only system resources, but also task resources are shown with their attributes in real time. So it's a little bit uh, similar to Linux top also. So you see this for CPU and virtual physical shared memory and swap, block IO, and memory details are um, displayed well. The shown tasks are sorted by uh, CPU uses by default, but you can change the sort of order uh, using uh, some other options. And task filter is also available to show only specific tasks. Yeah, all or specific function calls are monitored uh, for specific task in real time also. In addition, task uh, stats about function calls are also displayed such as average, minimum, and maximum time. At this picture, uh, all function calls are shown with backtraces. 
this part is called the function called last, and this part is for back, back traces. So um, the usage is not about CPU, it's the proportion uh, for total of actual function calls. So this feature is used when finding frequent calls or uh, measuring specific function call count, including backtrace. Of course, there is another function monitoring feature to measure CPU intensive function calls by sampling techniques. The task filter and uh, function filter are also supported. Uh, yeah, this is for syscalls. It's very similar to uh, prior uh, function call profiler. All syscalls, including factories, are monitored for specific tasks in real time. And all open files and sockets and pipes are monitored for each process in real time. Uh, files are displayed with uh, positions and open plugs and TCP and UDP sockets are shown with binding and connection status, and Unix domain sockets are also displayed with file paths. This kind of information is very uh, precious uh, with debugging issues or performance tracing. Uh, the process filter and file filter are also supported for this one. Yeah, the tracing feature for native functions such as C and C++ and Rust and Go is provided. Native function tracing is started by uh, btrace command in Guider. And the command is implemented using backtrace and called trap. Breakpoints for all symbol addresses from ERF and dwarf sections are injected to the target task's virtual memory Guider itself. So Guider can detect events for function call and function return from target task using ptrace. So Guider can even read and manipulate registers and memory for the target task when function events calls. As shown in this picture, call stacks are shown with various depth for Go program in real time. Arguments and binary name for each function are also displayed together in array. Uh, the G option in command line is task filter. So yeah, we can filter uh, some uh, uh, tasks, including uh, uh, specific words. And H option means printing backtraces like this here. So next tracing feature is about Python function. Yeah, Python function tracing is started by uh, py trace command in Guider. So the command will print all Python method calls, not native calls. So as shown in this picture, Python calls texts are displayed in real time at various steps, depending on the stack frame. File pass and line number for the for the each function uh, are also displayed together. Core commands used in previous, uh, previous native function tracing are also available for this feature. Yeah, next tracing feature, yeah, is for syscall. Yeah, it's very similar to previous commands. Uh, the difference with previous one is syscalls are displayed with backtrace and return value here and uh, elapsed, elapsed time for each syscalls. Yeah, next trace feature is for signal. Yeah, signal tracing is started by uh, sig trace command, and it will print all signals, uh, received signals for specific target tasks. So we can trace what signals are received and uh, why the signal is caused, like this. This is yeah, segmentation fault event. So text-based analysis is specific but less readable. So that's why Guider provides visualization features in SVG format. So using the SVG format output in your web browser, it provides an easy to view and responsive interface. So first uh, visualization feature is about resource graph, uh, like this. This is for CPU and uh, IO. And memories. So 
This visualization feature makes it easy to understand big data collected for a long time. So it also helps us to understand trends in resource uses and uh, good for communication with yeah, other people. Next visualization feature is about scheduling. Yeah. Scheduling data is very large and very difficult to analyze one by one. Yeah. Therefore, as shown in this picture, scheduling data such as time slice and preemption and blocking should be visualized prior to detailed analysis. Using the SVG format output in your web browser, you can view details for time slices like this. So it's very effective for analyzing multi-threaded programs, interactive services, and delayed tasks, and core utilization. In addition, this feature also allows for scheduling events as well as other custom events having timestamps for start and stop. And last visualization feature is about course text. Uh, analyzing only last called functions without full call stack is uh, not important because standard functions such like read and write can be called by any other functions. Above all, uh, in most uh, cases, last called functions will not cause all the problems. The problem is likely uh, some other functions that called those last functions. Therefore, so to analyze uh, performance problems in function level, we need to be uh, able to see the whole, uh, including uh, each course text. In this case, uh, this frame graph feature is very useful to analyze course text-based profiling result for CPU uses and I/O uh, blocking status and uh, memory leak and syscall trigger and specific function calls. As shown in this picture, last functions at the bottom of each task are various yeah, here. So uh, we need to analyze upper functions that contains them here. So I guess modifying those functions will improve your application performance, actually. Opening the, the SVG format output in your web browser, uh, highlighting and zooming and searching uh, specific functions or stats are uh, also available uh, using mouse and keyboard. Yeah, so far I have explained how to analyze uh, problems that have occurred already. Uh, however, how to analyze problems that are not well reproduced or had complex conditions? sudden stuttering and screen freezing and system reset and audio chopping and slow app launching or switching. These kinds of problems are difficult to analyze using uh, simple logs and often require system level information. Uh, especially for uh, temporary problems that occur suddenly and disappears. So there is no time to try to analyze something by connecting a terminal Sometimes there are uh, potential problems that are not even visible to the naked eye. How can we uh, analyze these problems easily and quickly and uh, uh, accurately with minimal effort? For this purpose, Guider runs as a system demo at all time and monitors system status and activities. And based on a threshold for predefined resource or event, specific commands are actually uh, automatically executed to handle them. Yeah. The specific options is shown in the figure. First, guider daemon loads the configuration file during initialization yeah, here and registers resource thresholds for each defined event and co uh, commands to handle them. After that, the target resource uses and other states are periodically saved and checked, and uh, if the status meets the conditions of specific events, then events are generated here. In addition, a separate report file is created and stored in storage 
by summarizing the stored system information, including resource uses. Uh, this allows you to uh, automatically handle problems with predefined commands when a specific problem occurs or a start problem analysis with a generated report. These functions, which works all the time, are usually performed using a small amount of resources of about one to five per, percent a second based on one core CPU. So it's very lightweight and suitable for uh, embedded systems as well. In the demo, the uh, occurrence condition of each event is defined as, uh, as the threshold value of each resource defined in advance through the config file. Each event is largely uh, classified into system and task and device units. System type attributes are defined for system-wide resources. Task type uh, attributes are defined as, well, uh, as all or specific tasks. And device type attributes are defined for specific stories or network devices. In this case of resources, as well as hardware devices such as uh, CPU, GPU, RAM, GPU MEM, storage, network. Uh, logical resources are states for such like block and load and file descriptor and sockets and uh, specific files and tasks. Uh, additionally, various types of logs and functions and IP messages are also available to be monitored. So inside Guider, a lot of, oh, it's, it's difficult to yeah, see. Inside Guider, a lot of resource and statistical information is updated in real time. So it's continuously checked to see if there are any events that exceed predefined thresholds. Some of the, the information collected inside the guider is displayed on the screen here. The command to be executed when an event occurs through the config file can be also defined. If you look at the config in JSON format on the right side of the screen, yeah, here, events of system and tasks are defined for CPU resources. This is it for CPU. So through the system part defined at the top, if the average system CPU usage exceeds 95%, the save command will be executed and Guider creates a report file based on the information, system information. It has been uh, being stored in the buffer itself. Uh, through the task part, defined the bottom, yeah, here. When the average CPU usage of a specific task exceeds, yeah, also 95, 95% for five, five intervals, the CMD TTOP proc commands is executed here. Yeah. So Guider start monitoring for all threads of the target process and save the result into specific file. In this way, when each event occurs, the commands defined in the command list are uh, executed sequentially and in parallel. So these commands may be predefined in the config file so it can also be a user-defined command that the user can uh, execute immediately in the, sh in the shell. So the left side of the screen shows the command provided in default yeah, here. So the top command, uh, system-wide monitoring, and f-top command monitors open files, and m-top command provides specific memory profile profiling, and desktop command uh, provides specific IO monitoring, and NetTop command provides specific network monitoring, and func func rack commands uh, monitors functions for all uh, threads, and TTOP proc commands monitors all threads of specific target task, and TTOP UTOP, yeah, here, command monitors the specific functions that Fun, uh, perform a specific target threads. And finally, leak command uh, here. Yeah. 
the command performs function tracing to find memory leak point for specific processes. In addition, various function, functions provided by Guider can be easily combined and used as uh, event handling commands. All of this is done by Guider itself without any installing packages or uh, specific libraries. Yeah, as shown the bottom of this screen here, when an um, event occurs, the names of the report files that are automatically generated have a regular format. All the files start with the execution order and uh, number of reports, and the resource and occurrence range, and threshold value, and time information of events are generated, uh, the report uh, added to the file these files. In default, each report is uh, just text file, but it can be uh, compressed and uh, generated according to the guide execution options. Uh, the reason that the compression function is supported uh, is uh, because uh, report files are automatically created in background, so uh, storage can be accessibly used uh, when many files are created. So yeah, the biggest issue is no uh, storage space. So in addition, if you use the option of the maximum size of the directory where report files are created, the daemon tries to uh, maintain the uh, specified capacity by uh, erasing the oldest one if a new report file is created that exceeds the uh, specific size. This is very important for mass products for embedded world. From now on, we will ex uh, explain the report file that is automatically generated when an event occurs. Uh, at the top of this report file, information like the picture is displayed. So execution options and versions and runtime, load, number of tasks, kernel command line, uh, this information helps uh, to understand each system and execution options through report files generated in uh, various environments. The following is information about system resources, uh, information about RAM and storage network. Other, other one is uh, displayed. Uh, this, it, it displays the system resources at the time the report was generated as well as the resources at the time, the daemon was first launched. Using this, uh, you can see the approximate resource changes and easily determine uh, the resources available at the time of event creation. If the previous page showed a snapshot at the time of the event uh, as each resource table, from now on, based on the information stored in the buffer uh, inside Guider before the event occurs, it shows the uh, amount of resource change in each section for a long time. For example, the top summary table shows the system resource uses line, uh, line by line for each segment. This plays various resources such as CPU, memory, block, swap, reclaim, fault, uh, context switching, interrupt, number of tasks, networks, and other ones. So uh, this table means the change of resources, CPU, yeah, memory, block I.O., reclaim, like this. So next is the top CPU info table here. This is for uh, CPU usages for processes or threads running. So it displays the minimum, average, uh, maximum, and total states for each process's CPU yeah, here. So it's very uh, uh, effective, effective when we analyze specific tasks uh, use CPUs for a long time. And other resource tables, uh, uh, like this one, is uh, for uh, memory and uh, uh, delay and I.O. and C group and other ones. When analyzing a report, it can be useful from uh, several effective uh, properties. 
Finally, the uh, part that shows the most specific information, so it showed detailed events and uh, resource information that occurred in each section. It's yeah, very similar to Linux top. So it shows detailed events and resource information that occurred in each section. So based on uh, previously summarized information, it's information that can be uh, referenced when you need specific information on a specific section. In particular, the information of the processes is specified and it's possible to check how much each resource is used in uh, which area. So finally, uh, the part, this part that shows the most specific information. Okay, so uh, as I uh, show you, uh, this report is converted to uh, uh, SVG format visualization files. So, okay. There are cases when it is necessary to control the daemon under uh, special circumstance. At this time, since the daemon operates in background, so commands cannot be sent to the uh, standard input on the shell. So the guider provides an event command separately to control the background daemon. So this command is originally used to generate a specific event, but if a, a string starts with CMD is used, it's in, uh, interpreted as a command to be passed to the daemon. The command to be uh, delivered to the daemon is as shown in this figure here. There are buffer size change, change and buffer initialization and monitoring stop, activation and deactivation of monitoring for specific resource change of monitoring cycle, uh, config reload, and first report generation and daemon restart and other ones. So I have exp explained some kind of uh, features of Guider, including tracing and monitoring and uh, daemon. So there are many useful features besides the ones I described, but I couldn't explain uh, because of time limitation. So. I introduced, I introduced a performance monitoring demo feature, so it will be more expanding to manage and analyze performance issues itself. For specific details, uh, please refer to the uh, readme file in Guido repository. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please contact me using email or GitHub issues. Yeah, thank you. Many features. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I felt that some of the features uh, in this tool uh, use the, the eBPF uh, the ah, feature yeah. in the Linux. Yes, right. So, which features are uh, using eBPF? Can you uh, explain? Ah, yeah, right. EB, eBPF is very nice and it's very latest uh, techniques, but it requires latest kernel and uh, some kernel patches. So, Guider doesn't use it, just using ptrace or ftrace only. Yeah. Is there any uh, unique features that the other performance tool uh, don't provide? Uh, unique features? Yes. Um, function monitoring and uh, task monitoring and other ones? Stack trace. <laughs> Stack trace? Uh, yes, right. So, that's right. <laughs> it's a... Thank you. Yeah.
Yeah, yeah. So question is, can performance analysis tool works on the Yocto OS of embedded systems? Yeah, sure. Uh, guider, uh, uh, there is already guider recipe uh, on embedded recipes, so you can use it easily. And actually, uh, as I told already, uh, just copying guider.file, guider.py file is enough to use it. Yes. So there is no requirement for using guider and on any uh, Linux systems. Yeah, it only requires Python, yeah, default Python. Thank you very much.